Arcola United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Terry. Glad you're here in Sanctuary with us, and those out there on Facebook, we're glad you're with us too. So, um, Just a few announcements. Uh, there is an ad board meeting tomorrow night at 6 p.m. here at the church. Uh, that's a special one uh, as we prepare for a charge conference, which will be coming up in November. And then uh, UMW meeting, at, uh, I assume it's at the church too. That will be on the 14th at 6 p.m. If anybody wants to join, uh, all the women of the church are welcome. So, And at, uh, that same night, there will be a community meeting over at the fire station at 6 p.m. So, I don't know how that's going to work. So, <laughs> Now, big announcement is on September 16th to the 26th. And I think you can read there, uh, taking orders for pies. Uh, but there will be crafts that they'll have to auction off by a silent auction type deal uh, over Facebook. Our page is simply Arcola United Methodist Church. But when you go to there, you need to make sure you get in the right Arcola United Methodist Church. Because there are at least two others, one in New Jersey and one or Pennsylvania and one in Illinois, so type in Arcola United Methodist Church, Arcola, Indiana, and it should come up, so. And we'd love to have you take part in that, too, so. I think that pretty well covers uh, what I have in the announcement up here, so is there anybody else got any out there? Yes, Sandy. Um, there is a special offering place back here that's the for the first Okay. Yes, Jack stopped in. Uh, Ruth wasn't feeling good, but he did stop in, and he put one of the offering plates in the back that is to go to Hurricane Relief, and that will go either to the south or out on the uh, east coast, wherever uh, it's designated by uh, UMCOR, uh, United Methodist UMCOR. So uh, if you so desire to, to help out with that, please put your offering in there, so. Are there others? As you notice, we did not have donuts again this morning. Uh, that's due to a, a shortage that they can't get the material they need at EGOF, so uh, that, I think it's going to be an ongoing thing this year. So, I, <laughs> so bear with us. We'll try to have some treats when we can, and when we can't, we'll just praise God anyway. So maybe he's looking out for our waste. <laughs> okay, if there's no other announcements, then would you join me in prayer? Father God, we give you thanks for the blessings of this day and that we can come together into your house to worship you. This is a special weekend, Lord. A weekend that we remember. An event that took place 20 years ago yesterday. And it's changed our nation forever. We lift up those who lost loved ones that on that day. And those that lost loved ones later on because of that day. We just ask, Lord, that they would feel your, your comfort and your peace. But as we join you this morning, Lord, you just help us to remember too. So that we don't repeat the history of the past. Be with us this morning as we gather in your name. I pray your Holy Spirit would come afresh upon each and every one of us. We know that as we gather here this morning, it says wherever two or more are gathered, you're with us. So reach out and touch us, Lord. I pray you bring us closer to your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Now, if you'd like to stand and let's join together in singing Jesus Calls Us, number 398. Thank you. 
No music? Okay. Jesus calls us over the torment of our life while restless sea. Day by day his sweet voice sounded, saying, Christian, follow me. As of old, the apostles heard it by the Galilean lake. Turn from home and toil and kindred, leaving all for Jesus' sake. Jesus calls us from the worship of the rain to a golden shore. For the idols that will keep us saying, Christian, love me more. In our joys and in our sorrows, days of toil and hours of ease, still he calls in cares and pleasure. Christian, love me more than these. Jesus calls us by the mercy, Savior, may we hear thy call. Give our hearts to shine obedience. our lives throughout this week. The fact that you brought us here this morning, we give thanks for. We give thanks for the way that you have extended your love to us through many different ways, and you've given us the ability to give back to you a portion of what you've blessed us with. We pray that what we offer back to you, Lord, can be lifted up and multiplied many times over. To reach out to hurricane victims in the south and in the east, to reach out beyond that to the world around us. We pray that you would accept these gifts. In Jesus' name, amen. for joys that we got to share this morning. Yes. Hello, right here. Yeah. <laughs> right there in your arms. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big joy. Where are you? I found out last weekend that my grandson's going to be a big brother. Oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, Praise God, God for that. that. Yes. Hello? Hey. Um, 
Jenny and Frank went down um, for his grandma's funeral, and although it's sad that she passed away, they knew where she was, and they knew where she wanted to be. And um, it's just a blessing to um, be able to know for a fact yeah. where she is. Yeah, from speaking from a pastor's perspective, those kind of funerals are the easy ones because it is a, a rejoicing and joy. So, good thanks for that. Yes. Are there others? Oh, got to yell at me, Becky. <laughs> Throw something at me. Okay. <laughs> um, just pray that uh, Jennifer and Annie, the boys, have all recovered from COVID and they're all back to work and school and, and seem to be doing well. Good. Praise God for that. Are there others? Let's go to the Lord in prayer then, shall we? Did you have something, Nikki? Um, she was at work last evening and involved in an incident, an accident, and the place she works and has a terrible cut from her eyebrow down across the corner of her eye, almost to the tip of her nose. And uh, I just ask that the Lord would just help that to heal with very little scarring because it's a it's a long, long cut. And she showed the picture, and it come down right down through here. Just, it's a really blessed. Just lucky it didn't hit the eye. So. Didn't get her eye. Praise God for that. Yeah, my name's Jackson, and today's her birthday. Oh, 20 years old today. <laughs> and thanks for Nancy and her family. Um, thank Laura and. Her husband has COVID and she was, she was with them, so she was so Also for um, Robin, my old wife, uh, Robin's wife, Robin. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Continue praise for mom. It's, it's just getting worse and getting better. Okay. She getting a little bit depressed? I think so sometimes. Okay. But having her there really okay. helps. <laughs> she brightens her up. <laughs> Did you have something else? Then? Yeah, we sh we need to uh, continue praying for our school districts. Um, things are just going to get more contentious, I think, and and uh, the administrators, and school boards need our prayers so they make the right decisions. Yeah, and they're they're stuck in a hard place. They Between are. a rock and a hard place they because are. anything they do is is not going to be right to, to somebody. So, yeah, Great. traveling mercy. Yeah, Marie says she's going to go traveling again. The baby's sit. By herself, her and Chip. <laughs> well. <laughs> My wife would say that's debatable. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, prayers for Mila. She was diagnosed with eczema, like her granny, and she's having such a bad breakout. It's, she itches, and her skin is chapped and sore, and so she's not feeling too good with that. Okay. You ready? Let's go to the Lord. Father, it is good to hear the children. And you've made this statement, let the children come unto you. 
and we're glad to have them here this morning. We're glad to hear that chatter and, and noise. We're glad to have their parents here, their grandparents. We're glad to have everyone that is visiting or joining us this morning. And do we just pray that as we come into your presence, uh, that we really do feel your presence. Whether it be that strange, warm feeling that warmed Charles Wesley's heart, or that sense of peace that comes over us, because we know that we're in a safe spot. We just give you thanks for all of it. We, we especially give you thanks for your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. This is a weekend, Lord, that we remember. Remember those tragic things that took place on Saturday or on the, the 11th in New York City when the Twin Towers were taken down. We're living in the world where things have changed from what we used to know it. Security has tightened. There seems to be a sort of an edge in the air yet. So we pray that as we continue, that you would be with our leaders as they make decisions that will affect everyone. We pray ultimately, Lord, that peace would come about in this world that we live in. That swords would be turned into plowshares. The guns would be turned into something else. That the violence would be taken away. That peace would come to all. We know it can happen. It has happened even in wars. And so we ask, Lord, that you would be with those that's in the power to make those decisions, that you guide them and help them to make those decisions for the best of all people. We come to, Lord, carrying burdens on our hearts for loved ones, whether it be a granddaughter or a grandchild, for children that are parents that are fighting this illness that has affected all of us the last two years and still continues to affect our lives, to school administrators that's making decisions that's going to be unpopular whichever way they, they go. Help us to try to see the other side. Not just see it from one perspective. Help us to work together for the betterment of all people. Help us to make a difference in the world that we live in. You've heard those requests that we've made already this morning for like I said, babies and children, for Jennifer and Andy and the boys, we praise you that, uh, that they're getting over this COVID that they had and life can begin to return to normal. To Jerry, those fought uh, an illness for a long time that they can't quite figure out what it is. And, we know how depressing that can be, so we ask that you would give her some peace, some comfort, some hope. For Nancy and her family, who are fighting COVID, even though Nancy may not have it, but she's been exposed to it. We just pray, Lord, that you would help her to, to stay safe and for her children to, to uh, recover from this COVID as quickly as possible. We thank a Robin, Lord, 
and the struggles that she's had. And we just pray you continue to be with her and Miles. We pray that as they treat her, that she can get back on her feet and get back to doing the things she loves to do, to get back to be able to go to work and just to have life return to a, as near normal as possible. And we pray for ourselves during this trying times. Help us to continue to be the, the example that you want us to be. To be more Christ-like. For we know we gather here not just as ordinary people, but we come as the children of God. So here are prayers we join together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from chapter 6 of Romans, verses 1 to 23. It's rather long, so sit back, close your eyes, don't go to sleep. Just listen as I read to you. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us who were baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through his baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we had been united with him in death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him also. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. Death, The death he died... He died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourself dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies so that you obey the evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been brought, bought from death to life, and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin no longer, so sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Rather, you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I'm using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. Just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity, 
and to ever increased wickedness. So now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness, leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at the time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. No, I just turned things around a little bit. Is that all right? You can't sing this one stand, or sitting down because the title of it is Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. It's on the screen or in your hymnal number 514. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, our soldiers of the cross. Lift high the royal banner, it may not suffer long. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every trouble is raised, which is Christ's is Lord in me. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the trumpet call obey. For to the mighty conflict, to this his glorious day. We then a great serve him against a number of Let courage rise with danger and strength to strength oppose. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you, ye dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor, each piece put on with prayer. Where duty calls or danger, he never wanting there. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the strike will not be long. They say this noise of battle, the next a victor's song. To those who vanquish evil, a crown of life shall be. They with the king of glory shall reign eternally. Have you ever asked yourself, how can I be good? I can remember many years ago when I asked that question. I thought it was hopeless and why even bother to go to church because there wasn't a chance that God could help me. Well, when we ask that self, how we emphasize it says a lot about our attitude towards what God can do or towards hopelessness. If you ask it like I ask it for many years, how can I be good? It was a, an attitude that says, I'm such a sinner, how can I ever become a good person? Or maybe you ask it like this, how can I be good? It seems to say, what does it mean to live a life of holiness? Or what does holiness even look like? 
Or maybe you said, how can I be good? It says, I want to live a holy life, but what do I need to do to, in order to get there? Or maybe you say it with how, period, can, period, I, period, be, period, good, period. As if to say, I need help at every level. I'm such a sinner. I'm all but hopeless. And even if I did know what holiness is, I don't have the power to live it out. Now, I don't know if you've asked that question. But only you know how you did if you did what kind of terminology you used. But regardless of how you phrased it, and regardless of which word you emphasized, if you have the desire to improve yourself, God is there to help you. And hopefully as we continue looking at the book of Romans the next few weeks, it'll make it a little bit clearer to us How do I become good? How do I become holy? Another way, a word of way of saying it is, how does I win this war against sin that's going on within my body? Some may think it's impossible, but it's not. Because the promise that's found in chapter 6, of verse 14 says, sin shall not have dominion over you. You need to underline that in your Bibles. You need to remember it. No matter what's going on, no matter how many mistakes you might have made or might make, Paul's telling us God's promise to us is sin shall not have dominion over us. That we're different Because of what we've done when we put Christ on in baptism. Before that time, we were empty and lifeless. Now through the power of Christ and what takes place at baptism, Paul says, for we died and were buried with Christ by that baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. You know, I may have messed up yesterday, and I probably did. Pretty good chance of it. But this morning was a new morning. A new day, a new chance, a new life to try to get it right. Now, if I try on my own, I'm going to fail. But we're not trying on our own because we put on Christ. And what did Christ give us when we were baptized? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that lives in each and every one of us. To help guide us. I like those little comics years ago. Remember them? Had a devil sitting on one shoulder and an angel sitting on the other. And which one are you going to listen to? They're both talking to you. Which one are you going to listen to? But they're still there. We still live in this world. It's not a perfect world. But God has given us the ability to shut the one out and to listen to the other. The other is going to lead us to a life of holiness. 
So we really need to understand the meaning of salvation. Because Christian life isn't just a matter of turning a new life or new leaf. It's a bega- uh, the matter of beginning a new life. It's not just that we think differently, though we do, and it's not just that we act differently, but we do. It's that we are different. Our souls, which were empty and lifeless, have been made alive through the power of Christ. And that's what Paul refers to when he said, for we died and were buried with Christ in baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we may also live new lives. You see, when you accepted Christ as your Savior, God gave you a new life. He gave you the capacity for holiness that you didn't have before. Understand Paul is not being allegorical or metaphorical or symbolic. When he says you've been made alive in Christ, he's being as literal as he can be. Something supernatural happens at the moment of your salvation. You're transferred from spiritual darkness to spiritual light, from spiritual death to spiritual life, and you now have the potential to live a godly life. He says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, How we praise God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we belong to Christ. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 13, he says, You were dead because of your sins, and then God made you alive with Christ. He forgave all our sins. That's not just the ones in the past, folks. But that's the ones in the past. That's the ones that we're going to make today and the ones that we're going to make in the future. He died to forgive them all. Paul goes on to say you should consider yourself dead to sin and able to live for the glory of God through Jesus Christ. Verse 11 of chapter 6. Another version says you should consider yourself or should count yourself dead to sin. Or another, reckon yourself dead to sin. It may not make sense. How can I even consider or reckon or count myself dead to sin when it's painfully obvious that I still make mistakes? I'm anything but dead to sin. Sin's alive and well and living in just about every area of my life. It seems that when I do good, I don't. And when I try not to do wrong, I do it anyway. Those were Paul's words. Does that fit any of your lives? It does mine. He said in chapter 7, verse 24, Wretched man that I am. How am I supposed to reckon myself dead? When I don't feel dead, I don't act dead. He's not teaching a psychological trick. He's teaching a principle upon which we can build a life of holiness. Your spiritual standing isn't based on your feelings. It's based on the Word of God, which is truth. Now, we live in a world where a lot of people think it's based on feelings. But Christian life isn't 
based on a feeling or a hunch. It's based on a fact. The fact of God's love for you. I like the way Bishop Woody White put it years ago. God loves you and there's not a thing you can do about it. No matter what, he's going to love you. So we need to start living our life. Not on the fact that, yes, we are still sinful, but on the fact that we have a chance at a new life. It's sort of like a, a child that learns to walk. How does that child start? He's laying on his back or she's laying on her back on the floor. What she got to do first? She's got to roll over, don't she? Well, eventually they learn how to do that, don't they? Then what's the next thing they learn to do? All of a sudden they're up on all fours and they're crawling. Or they're hunching along the floor. Before long, they're up there on all fours, and then the next thing you know, they're up on two feet, and they're trying to take a step from here to the pew, and yeah, they may take one or two steps and fall down. Does that stop that baby? No. That baby gets back up and tries again. And again. And again until... The baby successfully learns to walk. You know, it's the same way with our life. We got to learn to roll over first. Then we got to learn to get up on our knees and our hands to crawl. Then we got to learn to stand up. And then we got to learn to walk. Can that baby go out and walk a mile the first day? No. If they make it from the middle of the living room to a chair, they're, they're good doing good. But you check on that child 20 years later, and what are they out doing? They may be out there running that mile, two miles or 26 miles, or 30 miles. Because they kept on trying. And that's what God wants us to do. To keep on trying. So remember what salvation is all about. And then do the, the math on sin and righteousness, or in other words, count the cost. You know what the cost of sin is? Paul says if you choose sin, it leads to death. You can choose to obey God and receive his approval, or you can choose sin and die. It leads to shame. Paul says, and what was the result of committing sins? It was not good, since now you are ashamed of the things you used to do. Things that end up in eternal doom. In reality, sin brings about its own punishment. For the wages of sin is death. Death, shame, and punishment. That's the cost of choosing sin. Life and a future is the cost of choosing God and choosing righteousness. So choose the master that you obey. 
Paul says, don't you realize whatever you choose to obey becomes your master? You know, there's a lot of different ways we become slaves in this world. We may not realize it or think of it. In reality, our job is we're a slave too. Because we need it to survive. But in that job, we can choose the way we're going to go about the job. We can do the right way or we can do it the wrong way. Sooner or later, the wrong way, you're going to get caught. Back in the 70s, a gentleman by the name of Bob Dylan sang a song. I won't try to hurt your ears by trying to sing it. But the lyrics went like this. You got to serve somebody. It may be the devil. It may be the Lord. But you got to serve somebody. We serve the one we obey. Once we were slaves to sin, but now you have obeyed with all your heart the new teachings God has given you. Now you're free from sin. Your old master and you have become slaves to your new master, righteousness. Imagine that, being a slave to righteousness. Imagine being so controlled by holiness that you can't help but do right. When I hear that, my mind goes to an individual that lived and died amongst us, that worked with leper colony in Calcutta, Mother Teresa, who chose to do right. Her motto was, do no harm. Do no harm. And when each new nurse would come into that place where she worked at and oversaw you, she would look at them and say, the first thing you do is do no harm. Do no harm, do good, is what John Wesley said. It's our choice what we do each day with our life. It's our choice, no matter what happens the day before, to choose to do what we want with our lives. Do we choose to do no harm? to do good or do we choose to just focus upon ourselves and do what we want that eventually causes harms to our loved ones around us and eventually, eventually leads to our death in a place that I don't think we want to go you see God's grace set you free from sin the penalty of that sin, the power of that sin, the presence of that sin. Because God's grace, you can win the war on sin. Paul says our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. By taking on Christ, we're no longer slaves to sin. By taking on Christ, you have the capacity for holiness. That's what salvation really means. You've been forgiven. You've been given a new life. You've been given a new master. You choose to continue to serve this old master. You lose. If you choose to serve the new master, you win. The old master only gives shame and misery. The new master gives freedom, joy, peace, and holiness.
Which one do you choose? Would you pray with me? Father Almighty, we give you thanks for the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We give thanks for the hope and the future he's given to us. We give thanks to the help that he gives us on a daily basis. We pray each new day that we can be a little bit better, a little bit closer to being more Christ-like, that we might show Christ to the world that we live in. We ask this in his precious name. Amen. Would you stand and let's close this morning if I find my bulletin once again. With number 46, trust and obey for there's no other way. When we walk with the in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but a cottage of richly we pay. Not a grief or a loss, not a crown or a cross, but it's less if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay. For the favor he shows, for the joy he bestows, are for them who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Then fellowship see, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, when he says we will go, Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. As you go forth into the world today, go knowing that Christ is sending you. And you don't walk alone. You go because you go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Walking side by side with you. Go and be little Christians to the world that we live in. Amen. <laughs>